Oh, uh, how I met Barbara Harris. I got, I came to New York, I got an audition through a friend of mine's agent of a play called Oh Dad, Poor Dad, Mama's Hung You in the Closet and I'm Feeling So Sad by Arthur Coppett. That Jerome Robbins was directing off Broadway, the first time that he had ever directed a play. So he auditioned me five times this in December of 1961. And they introduced me to Barbara Harris, of whom I'd heard from her working from the Second City, you know. From moment one, it took off, it soared. It just like, it was better than the first audition. Mm -hmm. And she is directly responsible for my career, at least the particular career that I've had. Because just acting with her, um, it was magic. It was that improvisational quality she had, although she stuck, of course, completely to the language. It was so spontaneous and simple. And she was such a, a guide she just, I never acted with anyone like that. Mm -hmm. And so she got me that part, effectively. Then, a little over two weeks later, we were about to go into rehearsal in two days. And she was staying, she, was, she, she had stayed in New York longer than she thought she would, because she wanted to go back to Chicago with the Second City. She said, would you come over and we can, we can read through the scenes. We had, half of the play, at least, was two long scenes between me and her. And so I came over and we, and we read through them. And we spent an evening, two, three hours, going through them. And she gave me little acting tips. She said, the characters are named Jonathan and Rosalie. She said, when you say, say with the word, uh, when, when you say the name of my character, I think you're saying, this is saying Barbara. And when I say Jonathan, I'll think I'm saying Austin. And so we would read it again, and suddenly it was totally immediate. I mean, we wouldn't say Barbara and Austin, but we would think Barbara. Right at the end of the play is a seduction scene, which goes wildly, farcically awry, and then ends kind of in, in a way that's shocking. And working on the set with the bed, which was on a slant, she came up in the last half hour of the tech rehearsal. She came up with stuff that is some of the most inspired comic acting I've ever seen, let alone been on a stage with. And I mean, and everyone was exhausting. It was the end of three days of tech rehearsals. And the whole little theater just came alive. And, um, um, and so she saved that show. I mean, I mean, Joe Van Fleet was wonderful. And, but the one who made it this special thing was Barbara. The only one who held steady through that whole frightening opening I had to go through was Barbara. And she, uh, she got great reviews. Richard Rogers and Alan J. Lerner came to the show two or three weeks later. They knew they wanted to write a musical together, but then they announced the musical they were gonna write was gonna be for Barbara Harris, this woman in this little off-Broadway show. She, she who didn't, she'd never heard of Broadway, had almost never heard of Broadway musicals. Richard Rodgers gave her albums of his shows. She'd never played those scores. She'd, never, she'd barely even heard of the shows. Carousel, <laughs> South Pacific, and you know, all that. And uh, The King and I, and Ellen J. Lerner gave her the albums to My Fair Lady and Camelot. And she got, one of the, she, Carousel isn't bad, she would say. And, and uh, but what do I say to them? She was, of all the people I've ever met, she was the one most thrown by the idea. And, and in those first few weeks of Odette, poor dad, it was clear, and she, st she stayed with Odette for a whole year. She, she's the first, I've never seen, st uh, uh, the fact of becoming a major star descend on a person that quickly. And I've never seen anyone so thrown by it. There was no, oh my God, this is so exciting. And uh, uh, she was like, uh, um, 
She was just awesome. 